Hello, Anam Kai. How are you? Apeksha, how are you? Ignatius. Hi, how are you? I can see a lot of people. I'm just going to wait for more people to come in. But till then, of course, how are all of you doing? Manat, hi, you're welcome. Akanksha, Naomika. I can see so many people there. Okay, so um, I'm going to talk to you basically about uh, certain pro tips that you can get with regard to uh, makeup, uh, especially when you're going to do a video call or especially when you want something that is very presentable to people uh you don't want it to look too jarring you don't want it to look uh too understated either and um, i'm going to take you through certain pro tips with regard to that okay um a lot of people are always under the impression and a lot of people are always thinking that they don't know uh how much is too much everything stems from a principle where you need to understand transition of color and you need to understand the color that is used for a particular occasion this is really important um, as far as i'm concerned um, with all the 18 19 years of work uh, it's made me realize that the less you do the more it is as far as video calls or as far as television is even concerned and stuff like that you do not need a lot of makeup the logic is because uh, when you start doing makeup you have a lot of things that are interlinked to each other uh, you have one the colors that you use two you have um, a lot of information to know about lighting and the kind of lighting that those colors are going to be present in because they may not be the same colors in which you did your makeup uh, this is very very important uh, what you need to understand at this point is that if you ever feel that you're not able to understand makeup and your makeup does not look great when you come on videos or TVs or photographs and stuff like that, you need to take into understanding the theory about lighting, which plays a big role. A lot of people are under the impression that makeup done in white light is fine but it is not fine because you do not know where exactly that white light is going to bleach out the excess makeup or is it going to make it look like it's too washed out you need to focus on one very simple principle which i'm going to talk to you about you need to focus on whether your makeup is meant I'm repeating whether your makeup is meant to look natural or whether your makeup is meant to look made up depending on this we would choose each and every color and tone that we want to use because white light generally always lands up bleaching colors and washing them out so it's really important uh, simple rule white light will always soften all your colors the same color when you check it in yellow light or orange light is going to look brighter and in orange light is going to look darker uh, in a very simple way i always compare this to daylight which you get which is a mixture of a yellow and a white and if you see a red color early in the morning like at 5 a.m or 5 30 a.m or 6 a.m even the red does not look too jarring but if you see the same red in the afternoon at that point in time the red can look a little too loud and if you look at the same red color later on in the evening at that point in time that red is going to look more like a darker red or a maroony red this is what you need to understand this is the basic principle of success when you are working with lighting the other thing you want to keep in mind is how often do you feel that you've done makeup for yourself and you've realized that the makeup has not really looked amazing in the photograph and there are multiple things that go into that 
One is whether there was flash, there was no flashlight. Two is whether the surroundings were also matching the photograph you wanted to take. This is really important. The guidelines for a video call makeup or a TV makeup or video makeup, whatever you'd like to call it is, please try to have lighter backgrounds and you could wear monotone dark colors. Avoid wearing clothes with floral prints and stripes and multiple colors in it because they take away focus from what you want to actually take the focus. If you want makeup to take the focus, if you want skin to take the focus, just make sure that you do not go ahead and have too many stripes and too many colors either in the background or on the clothes that you wear. The other thing I want to talk about which is really important in this is a lot of people forget to take into consideration the fact of shadows. You have so many shadows which can get created depending on how and where you're placed and where your lighting and your camera is placed. You want to make sure that you minimize shadows. If you see right now, there are so many shadows which come here. There's shadow here. Do you see that? Okay. A lot of people forget to consider this very important fact. When you get shadows, it basically means that you are having more top light than front light, which is not really great for makeup because everything is going to look different. For example, you've covered your under eyes fully, but you might get a shadow and you might feel that the under eyes are not covered. And that misleads you to thinking that, oh my God, now I need much more makeup because my under eyes just not getting covered. But that is not true. It's true from the point of view that your lighting was not correct. If you have questions in the middle of my session as I am talking, please shoot those questions. I would be more than happy to answer you. Uh, this is an open platform. So um, we also know that Bioderma makes the Sensi Bio, the missile water. They've invented that. It's a great product for makeup removal. Uh, it works in an amazing way. We know about that also. But first, I'm going to finish about understanding makeup for TV, video, and stuff like that. Uh, you always want to use things which are more matte and less shiny. Because whenever you have shine, shine is going to reflect much more than a matte. A matte is going to absorb light, a shine will reflect light. When light reflects, if you have any imperfections, they will come up to the surface. You don't want those imperfections to show because that's the reason you're doing makeup. You're doing makeup to conceal and hide and sort of create an illusion. But if by mistake you do use shine, you will have difficulty in photographing it or videographing it with consistency. The reason is because the length of the ray of light is going to be different at every angle. Your face is not flat. Your face is in a round three-dimensional shape. So what's going to happen is when you turn one side to another, you're going to have light bounce off and it might be too much. It looks nice in photographs to look at, but I'm not too sure if you want to really do that on a video call where it just looks like you've dipped yourself in oil and come out. So I would definitely be very, very careful uh, when I look at highlighters with shine. You can use highlighters, but you should use highlighters which are matte and two shades lighter to your skin tone. The next we come to is a bit of contouring, which you need to understand about. Whenever you do contouring for video, camera, photography, anything like that, please understand how intense do you want it to be. The contouring I would do on a fashion show would be very different on a model from what I would do for a model where I do a skincare commercial. And it would again be very different from what I would do for somebody who is my bride who I'm getting ready for her day. So what I need you to understand is that there are degrees of contouring and there are degrees of highlighting and there are degrees of blushes. You want to know which degree do you want to focus upon or focus at so that that look is coincided with the feel that you want it to portray. 
you also want to understand that a lot of makeup is personality eccentric so you want to match makeup to your personality and your profession if i would dress up a bride uh, who is a doctor i would dress her up differently from the way i would dress up a bride who's an actress or a supermodel this is the next thing you need to really focus upon uh, a lot of people miss out on the basics the basics here are how much is enough for that person to feel comfortable in because when you do makeup you're supposed to enhance that person's beauty not make them feel um, alienated with too much makeup and stuff like that the easiest and the simplest rule to follow is please go ahead and always investigate with your customer and your client and always speak to them about it this is really really important what you need to do is you need to make sure that when you are starting you're always always in sync with what your customer or your client is wanting from you the rule for this is i say it and i call it as investigate but you know you really can't really investigate but sometimes small talk is very easy for you to do and understand as to what a person's comfort zone is of course if you're doing your own makeup you know what is enough for you if you need advice on colors and stuff like that it's very easy for you to go ahead and seek that advice by a professional makeup artist who is present uh, another thing that everybody needs to focus upon is if you ever feel that you are not confident of certain colors which you use please go ahead and refer to the makeup color wheel it's going to tell you it's a, it's a very easy rule okay it's going to tell you which colors are going to be complementary which colors are going to be adjacent that's analogous to each other so if you want a more monotone effect you want to go more the analogous side and if you want to go ahead and create a contrast where you want something to really show at that point in time you want to make sure that you can go ahead and add a little bit of an opposite color like red and green they're on two different ends of the color wheel so that creates an amazing contrast uh, coming back to uh, understanding the lighting effect again remember your red will not look red in white light it will look red in yellow light and a brighter red in yellow light and it's going to look even darker in orange light so I know a lot of people like to use ring lights when they do calls and stuff like that I use it also if I'm doing online classes and stuff like that with my students but it has its own limitation the limitation comes from the point of view where you will be going ahead and having to still adjust that lighting to go ahead and portray it correctly to the other viewer on the other end it's not like you can just take any color and do it in any light and it's all going to look fine you need to make sure that you correctly adjust this okay uh, Coming back to the rules of makeup, you basically want to go ahead and prepare your skin. We always want to cleanse the skin. Uh, a very good way to cleanse the skin is to use uh, micellar water. That's great. I love it also. I've used it a couple of times. Uh, I know that Biodama makes it. Uh, it's good for personal use because it can be amazing for your skin. It does not over dry your skin. It's good for normal makeup, regular makeup, waterproof makeup whatever makeup you want to use you can use it on uh, it's basically uh, an emulsion that is of surfactants with water and oil because water and oil otherwise do not mix with each other so uh, it's like like dilutes or mixes with like so water and oil don't mix normally but when you add a surfactant to it it's a completely different story when you add a surfactant to it it works in an amazing way where each molecule or each micellar is going to go ahead and have a head and a tail and the head is going to attach itself to the cotton and the tail part works to go ahead and dissolve and break up the oil in your makeup or even if you have waterproof makeup on it's amazing i've used it um uh, i think for four years at a stretch and it really worked uh, at that time, I don't know if Bioderma was here, but I used to pick it up from a medical store at Worley, uh, Seaface. That's where they actually had a lot of this. The other thing I want to talk to you about is 
uh, you want to ensure that you want to keep cleaning the skin with the micellar unless and until you see that that particular cotton is really clean like when you clean it you should not get anything out you should make sure that that cotton okay this is one round which i ran and it was really clean so cleansing then let's go to the part of toning i use a lot of different tricks for toners i have used rose water with uh, pudina leaves uh, i have frozen it uh, right inside the freezer in a stainless steel bowl and then just before needing to use it i get it out so it's like a little block of ice with rose water and mint extracts in it it works beautifully but you know you can't touch ice directly to your skin because it can go ahead and burst the blood capillaries underneath the skin so you want to make sure you wrap that ice up in tissue or a muslin cloth or something like that okay that's point two you want to always use a toner or just pick up a toner from a store you next want to do is i do this i don't know how many people advocate it but i also use a disinfectant we use something which is called face clean it's an antibiotic cream for the skin it's for any issues you can get whether you're going to get sensitivity whether you're going to get redness whether you're going to get acne post makeup it's just a disinfectant which you can take a little pea drop off and apply all across the face follow this up with your moisturizer this is again really important but if you feel you have excessively dry skin please make sure you first use a serum and then a moisturizer because a lot of people expect that putting on a moisturizer is immediately to transform and change everything it's not going to happen like that a moisturizer is going to sit on top it's not transderm by transderm i mean a product which can penetrate into the deeper layers of the skin so a serum can be transderm and if you have time to pat and dab and keep a serum on there is nothing more than that that is amazing for your skin uh, you want to follow that up with a basic moisturizer i like to do moisturizer sometimes with my hands because it has that little body finger heat which helps to press and dab the moisturizer in and then i follow it up with a primer you can choose there are so many primers so you can choose a primer which is matte gel based um illuminating uh with spf without spf depending on what time of the day you want to use it and stuff like that uh if you do choose spf just make sure that you're wearing it mostly from like 11 to 4 because that's when those sun rays are really harmful for you uh if you're doing something really evening post 6 i don't see the need for a strong sunscreen but we do know that if you get into strong light, it can have effect on pigmentation on the skin. So you want to be careful about that. I follow that up with uh, a very, very nice color corrector. So my primer is done. This was my base. I have now started a color corrector. The reason I have used a color corrector is because I want to make sure that all the dark areas of the skin on the face are camouflaged and corrected now this is different from a concealer a concealer is only going to sit on top of that dark patch and as your makeup settles that dark patch may come back and look visible so instead of that always use a color corrector if you feel that you can see pigmentation then you always want to use a color corrector the thumb rule we all want to follow is you want to use a peach for fair skin you want to use an orange for medium skin and a dark orange for dark skin okay uh, the shades of these are in cryolin you can get a 303 from supra which is peach you can get a d34 from derma which is really nice and you can use that on to color correct it and then of course you can also have mac and you can have so many other brands which have now made color correctors and they work beautifully one thing you want to be very sure of when you use a color corrector is please understand the reason you're using it 
if you're using a color corrector for the reason of actually hiding or camouflaging and you have a lot of pigmentation then you want to just follow pat dab and roll motion but if you feel you have good enough skin but you still have a little bit of pigmentation which you don't want to show then you can buff and blend that completely and as you buff and blend it it'll look even smoother and even better okay uh, coming back to the next step which is foundations when you want to use foundations and concealers you want to be careful as to the colors that you choose after color correction you want to go ahead and pick up a concealer when you pick up a concealer most indian skin tones are always yellow olive this is difficult to understand so what you need to see is if you have any redness which shows through your skin on the face and neck and any joints like knuckles hands elbows knees toes if there is redness present there that means you're not completely yellow olive that means you're more of a neutral skin tone person and you would need a foundation which would have a yellow and a pink okay if you understand this the next step is to go ahead and differentiate other colors so when you are talking of a yellow olive foundation that foundation is going to be something which is going to be closest to your skin color or one shade brighter or two shades brighter but at the same time you want to make sure that it has no pink no orange and no red in it this is really really important guys okay coming back when you use a concealer it's the opposite your concealer should always have pink in it because it's going to go ahead and conceal and hide the dark patch if i have pigmentation here and i try to use this color over here it's not going to really work for me so you need to basically take off the darkness from here hide it correctly and then put this color on top here so that it all looks even this is the simplest logic you want to follow layering method so you want to do layer one of a concealer you want to see if that dark patch is covered or not a concealer as you know should be pink tone and should also reflect some of your skin color qualities in it once you finish doing that you want to make sure that you layer it with foundation on top this is going to be your last step when you choose a foundation and especially for television and videos and stuff like that be very very careful you can have foundations which can oxidize and look so bad so they look amazing when you apply it and when you wipe it off they really look horrible and you're like oh shit was this really a foundation that I chose and is this the one that I really did on myself uh, you want to make sure that your foundation does not have a lot of high content of SPF because um, imagine this if the Sun is shining and you want protection you're going to take a foundation which has an SPF but that does not stop the Sun from hitting the foundation with its light and the rays when that happens your foundation starts to oxidize most SPFs are of titanium dioxide okay the other thing you want to focus on is if you yourself could be acidic or alkaline this is another issue if you're acidic I guarantee you your foundations are going to look gray and ashy toned in like 45 minutes of application you want to make sure that the insides of your body are not acidic you can't ask this to a client but most people who wear makeup know that once they put the makeup on how long does this makeup really look like it was fresh and when does it start looking darker so coming to foundations you can also follow liquid foundations or cream foundations liquid foundations which are amazing you have mac you have bobby brown you have stila you have so many of them it all depends on how much coverage you want whether you want them to be weatherproof or waterproof it also depends on the degree of coverage that you are expecting to build it to so I can pick up a foundation which is natural coverage 
and I can go ahead and do one layer, two layer, three layer, four layer, five layers and get it to medium or full. Some products have a building capacity. Some products don't have a building capacity. For the products which don't have a building capacity, there is nothing much that you can really do. You just apply it and you leave it. And you will realize that you were not able to cover a particular mark. When this happens, you need to understand you need a foundation with higher coverage. You get four different coverages. You get natural, you get medium, you get full, and you get buildable. So if it is somebody who has great skin, then you can use a natural finish or a natural coverage. If you have what we all have, common people, we all have pigmentation slightly, then the best for you is a medium to a buildable coverage. And if you realize that you have even more darker pigmentation than average people, then you want to make sure that you go to a really, really full coverage foundation. This is very important. How do you know what's full coverage? How do you know what's natural coverage? How do you know what's medium coverage? The simplest thing to do is try to get information off the bottle that you're buying or the box. If it does not give you that information, if you apply the product on your wrist and you see that the product is see-through, that means you can still see the skin behind the product where you applied it, then that means that that product has natural coverage. It's not going to withstand humidity, heat, sweating. None of those are going to be tolerated. If you apply a foundation at your wrist and you realize that, okay, my skin got hidden a bit, then that's medium coverage. But as your coverage goes higher, you may realize that the blendability or the blending factor of that foundation also reduces that means they become thicker they become heavier uh, and they may not go ahead and blend for too long after application please 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 make sure that you check this before you choose your foundation you don't want to land up saying that oh i wanted a foundation which covered everything this foundation doesn't cover everything but just try to get an understanding and test it the next thing you want to do is you want to learn how to fix your base and that is the application of loose powder. I like to do sandbagging. I don't know how many of you know what sandbagging is, but I generally dust the face with powder depending how much I need, whether it's outdoors, indoors, or whether I'm going to be uh, working on someone where it's meant for 12 hours, 40 hours, stuff like that. Sandbagging is an amazing technique to take away creases and lines from the under eye and um, yet sort of have your foundation on the under eye look like it doesn't have powder. That's, that's really miraculous, isn't it? So, once you finish concealer and foundation on the under eye, I will first finish powdering the entire face. Once I finish powdering the entire face, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take loose powder, translucent powder, whatever you want to call it, and I'm going to take a moist, damp sponge, and I'm going to actually pat, dab, and roll it on the under eye after picking up the loose powder in the moist sponge. The logic here is, under eyes generally are dry, they crack, and they, uh, they get makeup stuck in them. We don't want that look ever when we do makeup. So when you do this, what you're doing is you're also fixing the liquid and the cream uh, by putting on that powder. But at the same time, your powder is not allowed to look or make the under eye feel dry or flaky or cracky. Okay, so this is very important. This technique is called sandbagging. Um, I have some of my videos, you can go and watch them, uh, they show you what sandbagging is, they show you step-by-step -step application, um, powders I use and stuff like that. The next is when you come to contouring, blush and highlight. When you want to contour, you want to make sure you do not go ahead and have streaks of contour. You don't want patches and blotches of contour. You want to make sure that all of it is super, super blended. The idea of contouring is to create minimal and basic shadow. 
so you just want to make sure that when you apply contouring you actually really blend it well now this is what i tell people a lot of people they draw contouring lines and uh, it's it's important the product you use because if you're using a product which is going to dry say a matte foundation and you do this and it's dried and i try to blend it it's going to take off the base from underneath so you want to be very very sure about how you do this the logic is you want to pick up something that is creamy blendable and soft textured supra colors from kind i love those i use them a lot uh, i just do two lines here and then i blend it i can keep on blending it for like 45 minutes after application that's a great span and a window of application that you have at this point you want to also be aware that please 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 do not go ahead and add blotches with sponges of contour because they're never going to work okay understand one very simple thing you want shading you don't want divisional lines on the face you want it to look like there's the darkest color and then the light skin color and the brightest color which highlight you want it to give that effect you don't want it to give you the effect of blotches and patches which are not moving at all right so this is very very important sorry i have somebody saying hello sir i'm a big fan of you that's a fan moment for me how sweet akansha thank you so much i acknowledge your presence here let me know what is this session on i have joined first ever okay this session is all about understanding about pro tips of makeup application and what should you do and what should you not do when you want makeup to be photographed or put on a video call or uh, makeup that needs to be in a film even a film because a video and a film work similarly so any any of these things that's what the session is all about uh, somebody else said something we have great thanks for sharing okay thank you which brand makeup remover do you recommend um, as I told you that the micellar water that is Sensi Bio from Bioderma works really well I'm not saying that because I'm here for them I'm saying that because I've used it but there are so many makeup removers that you can lay your hands on you don't always have to go ahead and have one particular remover with you but you want to make sure that the remover that you use is not going to over dry your skin and at the same time can remove the makeup that has been applied completely because more than the application of makeup what's important is the removal of makeup that this is this is the most important key okay so when you contour you want to follow uh, a product which is blendable you want to always make sure that that particular product is going to be uh, easy to push into your base color and your highlight color so that and your blush color so it basically evens out the skin rather than makes it look blotched out the next thing that I would recommend for a blush is you always want to follow uh, a blush which is the closest to your natural flushed skin color. A lot of people don't understand this and they ask me what do you mean by a natural flush skin color? What I mean to say is you want to make sure that if you pinch your cheeks and the red you get that's the color of your blush that's the most natural color of your blush but a thumb rule is fair people can take any colors where the lighter colors look pretty and soft uh, medium take lesser colors and warmer colors and dark people take even warmer colors um, somebody says that really helps what kind of shades of lipsticks would you would be a better choice for a video call that is with dusky skin tone um, I think for a dusky skin tone a lot of browns generally work to make it look muted but if this is your only focus feature then I would recommend that you can use reds which are orange reds don't use blue undertone reds use orange tone under reds they really will light up your face and then all you'll need is just a liner um, I use Sensi Bio. Yeah, you know, it's not Sensi Bio H2O as in water. I hope you all know that. It's actually two atoms of hydrogen which hang on to one atom of oxygen. 
just for information. I have so many pores over my cheeks. How should I hide them? Please get a product which is from Benefit. It's called Pore Fashional. And it's amazing. It just needs to be applied and it's going to look after everything. Uh, it's silicone based, so it's going to help to even out the skin a lot. Uh, are there suitable makeup products that men can use? Uh, Sarvesh, um, for men, there is a whole range of makeup that you can lay your hands on. Uh, depends on which part of the world you are from. But uh, yes, uh, when we do movies and we shoot with actors, we do use makeup and we do use our normal makeup on men. It's just that you want to make sure that you use minimal makeup so the skin uh, can look nicer because uh, men's skin tend to be a little thicker and they tend to sweat more. So you want to just make sure you pick up the right products at this point. Um, I have something else, subtle. Are there subtle makeup products for men? Yes, sir, I answered you. I have somebody else who asked me, could you share your handle? Okay, sure. Um, I'm going to tell you what uh, this is, what it is. Um, it's uh, magical makeovers by Chirag. I gave it to you. Okay, uh, thanks sir for the reply. It's soothing to listen to all the tips while you're talking so softly. So great, thank you. Thanks. Um, do we have somebody else? Nina Lakey requested to be in the live video. Can I really do that? Um, okay, let's see what does Nina have in mind. Uh, it's okay. How do I pick up the perfect red lipstick? Uh, Ripali, this is very important and it's a good question. You get reds with different undertones. I just spoke to someone about it. Uh, you get reds with pink undertones, blue undertones and orange undertones. If you're fair, then make sure you pick up the reds which have a little pinkish undertone or an orangey undertone. Um, you want to just make sure that from the blue undertones, Indian people should be a little away from blue undertones because as it is around the mouth, we have a lot of bluing and graying that occurs. You want to be way, way, way away from that. Okay. So pick up pink reds and pick up orange reds. So fiery. Uh, you, thank you, sir, for the reply. And we have, does everyone needs color correction? Um, no, uh, everyone does not need color correction. As I said, if you realize that the base skin color is different and the pigmentation area is different that is the time you want to make sure you color correct so example this is my face i realize i have pigmentation here and i have pigmentation here then when i can see it over a one foot distance i know that i want to use color corrector but if it all looks even you don't really need a color corrector the lesser the layers of makeup the better it is for you uh, please suggest a suitable moisturizer before makeup application for oily skin. I love, love, love Clinique. Dramatically different moisturizing gel. It's awesome. Just use it. You'll love it. It's called DDM and it's a gel based. So you will bless me for it. Yeah, it's amazing. I've used it for a very long time. I have oily skin and now it's turning to combination with age. Uh, could you suggest me an orange red lipstick? Um, I'm very familiar with the colors from Mac. Uh, so uh, orange red from Mac. Uh, Ruby Woo is one, but that's not really orange. But check out anything like Ruby Woo or in that rack which you see at the Mac store. All of them are the orange reds. Um, there used to be a color called Flame. I don't know if it's still available. I'm talking about many, many years back at Mac, and I'm not sure if that's still there, but Dior has some amazing red oranges. Uh, best face wash for pigmentation skin. Mm. Uh, 
I don't know if a face wash is really going to help pigmentation that much. Uh, but if you DM me, I'll send you a list. Could you please suggest a good mascara? I love, I love Benefit mascaras. I love Lancome mascaras. I love MAC Hot and Naughty mascaras. Uh, pigmented lips. Um, uh, Anjali, uh, use a scrub for the lip. This is really important. Uh, and then use a lip balm. And uh, you should see a brightening effect. But a natural tip is going to be lemon juice with sugar granules. And just use an exfoliator of that for your lip. And your lip will be fine. Uh, so short or brick is nice. Uh, yes, I love so short. Uh, brick is also nice. Yes, absolutely. You could use either of those. Uh, so short being better. Brick. Uh, I feel goes a little darker. Uh, please suggest some good products for acne and oily skin. Um, the first thing is you need to know, Sneha, why do you have the acne? Acne can be due to oily skin and hormones. Uh, it could have a lot to do with the insides of the body. Uh, what I would suggest to you is once you find out the actual cause of it, then it's very easy to use the right makeup. But you try to use, be away from mineral makeup, Sneha. Try to use makeup which is very, very matte. Try to use makeup which has silica as an ingredient in it because silica is an oil-absorbing mineral and the MAC Studio Fix Foundation makes it exactly the way it is for oily skin. Um, best concealer brand that you would suggest. What kind of coverage are you looking for? Uh, you can have Tarte Shape Tape, which is full blank out coverage. You can have NARS for a satin finish. And uh, you can have MAC for um, a moisturizing and a hydrating effect. Also, uh, Select Moisture Cover was amazing, so I used to love that. Somebody's question got left out. Um, how to remove dry patches when using a foundation? Amazing. Um, do you think that you're getting the dry patches because your skin is dry? Uh, or do you feel it's just flaking because you haven't exfoliated before you started the makeup? You need to question yourself this and find the right answer to it. But if you feel this is happening when you're using a foundation, avoid stippling or avoid buffing or avoid anything with friction. Instead, follow pat dab movement on that area which is flaky. Try to use creams and liquids which will hydrate that particular area. When you powder that area, powder it minimalistically with a fan brush. Or if you use another one, just dust the powder. Don't really pack the powder because it's just going to dry again. Uh, okay, I answered that. Any lip balm for pigmented lips? Um, you mean a cure? For it is uh, Caramax. I use a lot of it, so you can look it up. It's it's very nice. It doesn't smell amazing. It's a little medicated, but it's awesome. Use it. You'll see a big difference in the lip. Uh, Sneha, you have oily skin, so I answered you. Max Studio Fix Foundation, outstanding product. Uh, for the day, you can use the Compact, which is a powder foundation studio fix. And for night times, you could use the liquid if you wanted which is also the same formula. Does diet play an important role to bring the glow before a party? If then, please suggest something. Um, I think it does, but you, you need certain amount of consistency with the diet. Uh, I think more than that is about how the detoxification of the body occurs. Um, it also is up to you as to how you look after and maintain your skin. Um, a lot of people want to do a facial once in three months and they expect it's going to last forever. And that's not going to happen at any point in time. Uh, what is really important is that you need to maintain it. Uh, if you do a facial once every month, then after six months, you'll see a difference. But even after that, if you stop your facials, it's, it's going to go back because you're sort of trying to reverse the clock of aging, right? We all want to get into anti-aging. So a lot of collagen masks will help you to look amazing. 
A lot of snail masks will help you for the moisturizing quality that they give you and the hydration. A lot of hyaluronic acid masks will help you because they help to retain moisture and water onto the skin. Uh, that answers you. I'm suffering from cirrhosis. I need help. Hi, um, Austin Tayal. Hi, how are you? That's a nice name. Uh, I would recommend for cirrhosis, the best treatment, according to me, I've tried it, is first thing, follow aloe vera gel, 99% aloe vera gel application and first treat it. Avoid using too much makeup. Uh, the more makeup you put on it, the worse it will look. But if you really want to cover it, then try getting Derma Camouflage Foundation from Kralin. Uh, medium coverage foundation, um, concealer maybe. Uh, NARS, amazing. Uh, Pro Long Wear concealer from MAC, amazing. But more full coverage. Uh, Huda concealer, amazing. Uh, all of those are amazing. And um, you can probably use lesser. I always like to do that. So I, I have a variety. But uh, say, for example, I want to cover dark under eyes or pigmentation. I will use the chart shape tape, uh, but I'll use lesser when I need lesser. That's all I do. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, guys. Skincare routine, please, with products. Okay, Anjali, let's go through this. So, uh, of course, a face wash, which is going to be pH balanced. They'll be a little more expensive than the ones which are not pH balanced. You want to make sure you have pH balanced face wash. Uh, once you get a pH balanced face wash, then you want to go ahead and get a toner. And you want to make sure it's a natural source toner like Himalaya toner or Dabar Gulabi toner. Or if you have a problem of acne and stuff like that, then you can get an astringent, which is going to actually disinfect and remove the bacteria from the acne. So that's one. Uh, the next thing is you want a day cream, you want a night cream. Your day cream can have an SPF. Your night cream does not need an SPF. Your night cream should be more luxurious, thicker in texture, uh, but hydrating. You don't want it to be very heavy and oily. Uh, and uh, the other thing you need to do is uh, you need to look after your skin with a serum because, as I said, there's a technology which is called Transderm, and serums, skincare serums are Transderm. So some of the serums are transderm and they can start bringing a change from inside out rather than just keep on changing the top surface where you feel happy looking at it while you use it. Uh, so that should be great. Um, lost the chat, your handle. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's Magical Makeovers by Chirag. Uh, I'm going to put my number in case you need it. It's double nine six seven double zero double zero one five. Okay, to cure cirrhosis apart from aloe vera gel, what is required to make skin less flaky? Um, you would really need a dermatologist intervention at this point. Uh, everything that I tell you is related to makeup and preparing skin before makeup. I'm not a qualified dermatologist. Um, I could be an aesthetician, but not a qualified dermatologist. So uh, I know aloe vera has worked amazingly. I know some people also use um, a lot of coconut oil, a cold pressed virgin coconut oil. It's awesome. I have a black birthmark over my chin. When I apply anything on it, it gets brighter. Yes, okay. And there comes two shades of the skin. Uh, you need to use a color corrector right onto that mark first. Uh, try, try to just dab rather than rub. Just dab on the color corrector, dab on the concealer, dab on the foundation. Try to get products which are all full coverage. Um, okay, um, okay, are 10 steps of Korean skincare routine really required? If not, please suggest a basic one for nighttime. Okay, I don't know how much time you have, but I would never have follow those 10 step routine for Korean skin. I know they have amazing skin, but we don't really have the time. Uh, plus, 
the weather is different. Our weather is different. Okay. So what I would do is at bedtime, I would wash the face uh, with a nice face wash. I would go ahead and put on a skincare serum and under eye gel and a moisturizer and a lip balm. And I would be off to bed. Can you tell me skincare for dry skin? Uh, you need to be very, very careful about the products that you pick for dry skin. Uh, you want to make sure everything you use has enough hydration that is getting in because you want to be able to treat it uh, in a way where you can put makeup on or not put makeup on, but the skin does not really look so dry. So uh, again, the same thing follows. Virgin cold pressed coconut oil is amazing. Aloe vera gel is amazing. Uh, if you feel If you feel that it's not working for you, then you can also try almond oil or you get something called Evian, which is a vitamin E capsule. This is a miraculous capsule. It just completely looks after the dryness. And vitamin E is amazing by itself. Some people also snip it and put it onto the skin. But I would say if you want to do that, you want to snip it, you want to take only two drops out of the capsule, Keep another base with it like an aloe vera or something so it's not too concentrated and apply a thick mask of that. And you'll see the difference in maybe five days. Please save this slide. All right, so for sure, 100%. I will do that. Coconut oil works very well. Yes, Prachi. Thank you. Okay, which concealer is best for dark circles? My eyes look so weird after applying a concealer. So there are a couple of things that can happen. One is that the concealer is not covering it. Two is that the concealer is collecting in the lines in it. And three is that it is looking more obvious than it was without makeup. You want to make sure you get the right color, point one. Your concealer should be pink undertoned and should be closest to your skin color. The next thing you want to always remember is any concealer that you use needs to be patted and tapped in. Do not take a concealer and try to rub it directly with the wand. You might have too much product put there and that's going to be a big issue. Uh, you want to immediately set a concealer. That means you want to make sure that a concealer does not have time to settle in the lines and you lock it in with a powder. And that's the technique which I said earlier in the video, which was called sandbagging. And if you have dark circles which are too obvious, please get the Tarte Shape Tape Concealer. It will blank out everything. Is coconut oil good for oily skin? Um, if you put it on for some time and take it off, it's fine. Actually, as a matter of fact, I'm a big fan of oily skin because they never get lines, they never get wrinkles, and they always look plump and fresh. So I'm a big, big, big fan of this. Yes, for sure. Uh, shit. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, can I use Bioderma Aeroderm Moisturizer? Yes, you can. It's fine. Absolutely. Uh, please suggest a good night cream for brightening. Amazing product that I know of is from uh, Estee Lauder Advanced Night Repair Serum. You will love this product. Okay, thanks, thanks. Argan oil, good. Yes, argan oil also is good. Argan oil works. It, it's going to brighten. It will definitely work for you, for sure. And uh, do we have any more questions? So, yes, hello. Hi. Uh, let's see. We have five minutes left, four minutes left, to be precise. We suggest a day cream for oily skin. Uh, I use a lot of MAC oil control lotion. It's amazing. It's a moisturizer with the brain. It thinks where to push out hydration and where not to push out hydration. Or you can also go ahead and use the Clinique Dramatically Different Moisturizing Gel. It's amazing, amazing, amazing. Okay, so we have three minutes. So do we have any other questions? Do we have anybody else who needs help, assistance? Are we all good? 
Okay, I guess you're fine. All right, okay, a big question suddenly came. Can you suggest some pH balance cleansers? Uh, Cetaphil was suggested by my dermatologist, but didn't suit me well. Cetaphil is amazing. I'm, I'm amazed how you say it didn't work for you, but uh, okay, um, I would say that have you ever tried using the micellar water? Have you ever tried Sensi Bio? It's meant for sensitive skin. It does not dry the skin. It contains uh, fatty acid esters in it, which are amazing, amazing for your skin. Um, try it. I have seen that it aggravates the skin the least. So try it. Can you suggest a cream for dry skin? I said, okay, so uh, the Clinique Dramatically Different Moisturizing Gel is amazing. It's a product by Clinique Cosmetics. Moisturizer for combination skin. Uh, I, I use one which is the Cetaphil Moisturizer, uh, which is for face and body. And it works amazingly for me and my students at the academy. I've used it on a lot of people. Nobody's ever had an issue. Shabda, hi. Uh, not yet, thanks. Okay. All right, guys. So uh, this brings us to an amazing session. Informative and a small, nice, loving group. Uh, a lot of questions could be answered since we have good enough quantity of people and not too many who barge in. So... We've had an amazing conversation. Thank you so much. I have left you my number if you need to get in touch. And um, we we'll see you soon. I keep doing these uh, for a lot of different brands and at a lot of different times. Keep watching the space uh, on my page. It's Magical Makeovers by Chirag. Uh, thank you so much. I'm going to sign out. All the best. Keep safe.